should I? Can I take this? I'm on. Are you serious? <laughs> so I just asked him if I could take my shirt, my my shirt, my jacket off, and he tells me we're on. Great. Um, I'm taking off my jacket anyway. Hey, uh, how are y'all doing? Good evening. We just uh, wanted to do a Facebook Live and and um, catch up, see what's going on this week, and talk to you all about uh, some of the things we've been working on. So I uh, just want to remind you, you can go into the uh, section right below where it says write a comment. And i um, happy to answer any questions or comments you all may have. I promise I'm going to stop there. Um, but um, uh, so this week we uh, worked on legislation having to do with financial institutions where we um, help to provide regulatory relief. And largely what we've been seeing is a lot of the smaller community banks all across the United States have been consolidating. They've been uh, having to consolidate with larger and larger banks because of all of the regulatory burden that's placed upon them. You may have a small little community bank that has to meet the same uh, regulatory or same follow all the same rules and burdens as this huge multi-state bank that's maybe hundreds of billions of dollars. And so um, we're, we're trying to provide relief. That way we can continue having these small community banks where you know the people in there, they know you, and uh, much better service from, from some of those. So in any case, um, we did that. We are still spending a lot of time working on infrastructure issues and continuing to move forward. Been meeting with the Corps of Engineers and uh, had a hearing this week with Secretary Elaine Chow from the Secretary of Transportation. We had hearings on energy issues, had hearings on Coast Guard issues, uh, marked up a number of bills and resources committee today. Uh, so really uh, been spending a, a lot of time uh, this week meeting with people from Louisiana. We have uh, the parishes are in town. Uh, many of the parishes are in town this uh, this week. We also have a number of the levy districts that are in town this week, been meeting with them. Uh, so, and, and then uh, a number of folks are in town advocating for Middle East policy, specifically around Israel. The uh, APAC annual conference was this week, which brought up a number of uh, community leaders and religious leaders from all over Louisiana, and we had a number of meetings with them. So, so that's what's going on. And I'm um, watching this video as I'm taking my shirt off. That's I'm taking my tie off. That's fantastic. All right. In any case, um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump over to um, to y'all's questions here. Just want to remind you, you can go right down below where it says write a comment, and um, and I'll uh, I'll go through and answer those questions. So thank you all very much for being on. All right. Uh, Tess, uh, waiting for me to come back, still wondering progress on duplication of benefits. All right, Tessa, here's the deal. Uh, duplication of benefits, as you know, um, people that uh, might have applied for an SBA loan after the 2016 floods, you are prohibited from getting a grant in most cases from the Restore Louisiana program. We passed a bill through the House that would entirely cure or remedy that. It would take it all away. It would allow you to get a grant uh, even if you got a loan. Um, the Senate has not passed it. They've refused to take it up. So we've been looking at other ways, other bills to send it to them uh, on other bills they want to, to pass. And so there's another bill that we'll be working on probably as early as next week uh, where we're trying to negotiate right now with the Senate and, and add that language to it. So um, again, this is passed the House. We passed it out of the House committee unanimously, Republicans and Democrats. There's strong bipartisan support in the House. And I just urge you to continue where in with the Senate on uh, on this one, Tess. Tessa, excuse me. Um, Ashley, good evening. Uh, GA, love the live feeds. Thanks for being on. James, uh, hey, thank you for being on. Uh, Derek, you asked about duplication of benefits as well. I hope you just heard my update to uh, Tessa. Uh, Rebecca, hi, Gail. Good evening to you. Uh, Cheryl, what's going on with health care? Well, uh, Cheryl, a few things. In the tax bill that we did in late December, uh, we uh, withdrew or eliminated the Obamacare mandate. And you may recall that there was actually a mandate in law that required you to have um, health insurance. And if you did not, you would be uh, given a fine by the federal government. You, you would, they would fine you uh, for not having health insurance, which I think is ridiculous that the government would give you a mandate to require that you had health insurance. So. Uh, that has been repealed. The Cadillac tax, medical device tax have also been repealed. We did pass a comprehensive uh, repeal of the Affordable Care Act last year through the House. That did not get through the Senate. Uh, so we've been working and in, in trying to um, remove different components of it that we can remove. And let me, let me tell you why, because I know some people say, well, why are you doing it? Well, here's why. 
we're, we're trying to repeal it, revise it, reform it, because uh, premiums in Louisiana have gone up almost 150%, your health insurance premiums, 150% per year since the Affordable Care Act, and I'll say it again, Affordable Care Act passed. Obviously, they named it one thing, but the implications were very different. It was an experiment. I think it was a failed experiment. I was not in Congress when that passed, but it has resulted in significantly higher premiums. It's resulted in significantly higher deductibles as well. So um, we're continuing to working and, and like I said, re, uh, repealing or revoking components of it as we move forward with larger uh, reforms. Some of the things that we're continuing to work on and have been talking about for the last few years, one is we've got to have better tr price transparency in healthcare. Whether you get a prescription or you go to the doctor or hospital, in many cases, we don't have a clue how much we're going to be paying and we get these absurd bills. Uh, number two, uh, drug prices. We, we should not be paying these, these wild different prices in the United States for the same exact drug you can buy in Canada and other countries. Um, we may be paying 10 times or 100 times higher cost in the United States. I don't think that's fair. If drug companies are going to do that, I think we should be able to import drugs from Canada and other developed nations. Um, uh, incentivizing behavior like, like eating right and exercising, yeah, insurance companies should incentivize us to do that and should be allowed to do so. In some cases, they're not allowed to do it. So we're working on a number of things along those lines to help further improve health care. Uh, sorry for the long answer, Cheryl. Uh, Wendy, good evening. Uh, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Joel, um, opinion on the reemergence of the St. George movement. Look, Joel, first of all, um, I think that self-determination, meaning allowing a community to vote on, on, on their determination, their future. That's kind of what America is about. So I'm, a, I'm an advocate of, of self-determination and, and allowing communities to vote on what happens to them. That's, a, that's our, our government, a, a constitutional republic. But I also want to say that, that for us to ignore sort of the, the foundational reasons or, or that people are frustrated. And I've heard people talk about the schools. I've heard people talk about crime and other things. We can't ignore those things. And so uh, we have got to work on fixing those underlying problems. And, and whether St. George happens, it doesn't happen, that doesn't eliminate these crime problems, the education or school problems that are out there. And so, um, uh, Joel, I do think that it's really important that those issues be addressed, but I'd be curious of your feedback on that. So, Joel, if you don't mind, give me, give me some feedback. CN, good to see you. Uh, the, yeah, the Coastal Resource uh, uh, Law Seminar in New Orleans, we, we talked um, uh, for a, a, a continued learning um, event in New Orleans, uh, talking about the coast and some of the efforts that are underway uh, to help with restoration, some of the progress we've made in uh, recent years, getting additional money and helping to eliminate some of the red tape so some of these really uh, significant projects can move forward. And really excited, we, we maybe even have a project that's going to be approaching about a billion dollars, largest project by far in coastal Louisiana history, maybe moving forward sometime in, uh, in the near future. So excited about that. Donna, good evening. Yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah. Uh, Kevin's reminding me. Uh, if you don't mind, go down right there, right, and over there. Uh, go down to where it says share. If y'all could do that, it helps us connect with more of the 750,000 people that live in the uh, 13 parishes that we represent. So I'd appreciate you sharing this, uh, this video if you don't mind. Uh, Susan, need info on duplication of benefits. Susan, I, I gave an update earlier to, um, to Tessa. If, if you didn't hear that one, let me know, and I'll, I'll uh, give the update again. Uh, William. Democrats are, well, okay, hang on. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I understand your frustration, William, and um, I'm, I'm hoping that some of the tax reform that we did in December of last year is something that's going to be good for you, going to be good for uh, really everyone in South Louisiana and incentivize hard work because it allows you to keep more of your paycheck. Uh, and uh, hello to you. Uh, Kiki, hey, appreciate you being on. Donna. Uh, Restore said today grant program is still the same with no changes yet. When will they recalculate grants for those who did not take SBA loans? Okay, so Donna, here's the deal. Um, 
we met with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. They are the agency that has provided the funds. We fought for those funds for the state of Louisiana. We were able to get $1.7 billion in funding. That is the only revenue source that is funding the Restore Louisiana program. There are no state funds in that program. It's all federal. And so uh, under the, the, the rules from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, they have told us that if you were approved for a loan but did not take the SBA loan, that you, sh you, you can be eligible for the Restore Louisiana program. Uh, we recently had a meeting with the state. Um, they are aware of that information. I cannot speak to their timing, but we will engage them and see if we engage the state on this and see if we can get an update for you. But I will say we did brief them on this. They are aware of it, and um, and that is possible. But also let's keep in mind, Donna, that there are many people that did take a loan, and those people currently are prohibited from, from getting a grant from the Restore Louisiana program, and we're not going to stop fighting to get that fix done as well. And I'll just reiterate again, um, reiterate again, I guess that's a double, isn't it? Um, um, but I'll reiterate that uh, we did pass a bill through the House of Representatives that would have fixed that for everyone, whether you accepted the loan or did not. Uh, Wendy, uh, keep seeing ads uh, for someone opposing a wind farm in Oklahoma. Um, you know what? I don't know what that's about, Wendy. Um, I, I uh, all right, I'm getting a bunch of blank faces in here. So, I'm, Wendy, I'm not sure, um, but uh, we can try and look it up and, and see if we can respond to you. Will somebody just make note? It's um, Wendy Adams. Uh, let, let's try and figure out what that's about. Uh, Gail, opening the spillway. Yes, Gail. So, so right now, and this is kind of interesting, and I know us nerds out there uh, find it interesting anyway, but uh, the Mississippi River system is at a level that it would actually flood New Orleans. And so here's the deal. The river above Baton Rouge can handle more capacity, more water than it can effectively through Baton Rouge. And then the area through Baton Rouge all the way down to St. Charles Parish can handle more water than it can through New Orleans. So, so you could have water that safely passes Baton Rouge, that if that amount of water were to go through the New Orleans River system, uh, Mississippi River around New Orleans, it would actually flood. As a result of that, there are a few floodways or spillways. One of them is above Baton Rouge in the town of Morganza called the Morganza Spillway. It channels water over to the Atchafalaya River whenever the volume or the flow hits a certain level. Or, or the river level. Um, there's also a spillway in St. Charles Parish above uh, New Orleans on the river called the Bonacary Spillway. That's the one you drive over on I-10 between Laplace and Kenner. Uh, that one uh, flows water out of the Mississippi River over to the east into Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Bourne, and out to the Gulf of Mexico. So it's, it's interesting, and bear with me for just a minute. Uh, the Bonacary Spillway historically has only been opened uh, about once every 10 years. I need to go back and do the count again, but I think this is the fourth time in 11 years that, that we're opening the Bonacary Spillway. Give me a little flexibility there. It's somewhere around that. But just showing you that we are increasingly opening the river, the, opening the Bonacary Spillway, which is concerning. So we've been digging in on this a little bit, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, it could be the fact that our Mississippi River in, in uh, all over South Louisiana drains from um, uh, Montana, to two Canadian provinces, to New York. All of that entire area comes down in funnels into our Mississippi River system. And so it could be that there's more development up in, the, up in the, that upper basin and that huge area that's sending more water down to us. If they build more parking lots and houses and shopping centers, then they don't have as much area for the water to, to go down and into the aquifer. And, and so instead it comes in the river and it sends more water to us. It could be some of the climate changes and changes in weather patterns, um, or it could be something that we recently confirmed that effectively the Mississippi River in Louisiana is now, I guess, more shallow and uh, more narrow in some areas. And so uh, there are some areas of the river just above Baton Rouge where the, the height of the same volume of water is actually six and a half feet higher than it used to be. And so we really are having uh, changes in the river, they call it geomorphic changes in the river, that, that is causing us to be more vulnerable to flooding. 
So we've met with the Corps of Engineers. We told them they need to clean the river out because that doesn't just affect us. It, it, it slows down the flow. It makes us more vulnerable to flooding. It decreases the efficiency of that drainage. So it is probably going to, Bonacary Spillway is probably going to be opening on, um, uh, it's probably going to be opening on Thursday. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out where I was. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. Thank you. Um, uh, so it should be opening tomorrow. Gail, really sorry for the long answer, but I kind of geek out about the river and the coast and, and um, so uh, spent a lot of time studying that stuff. Uh, Greg, sorry for the long answer. Uh, G Greg, um, National Hanson's Disease Program at Federal Agency your District has been hit with a 25% budget cut and is planning to close several clinics around the nation. Please contact them. They're part of HHS. Uh, my mouse here. Um, we, will, uh, we will do that. Um, Oh, actually, well, okay. So, so I'm frozen. That's what's going on. All right, so I'm just going to keep going up these things here. Uh, Tessa, thank you. Steve, uh, went to school with your awesome employee, Nancy. Okay, I know Nancy's paying you for that. I know her, her uh, tricks, and um, no doubt in my mind that that's what's going on there. Um, so, uh, Nancy, um, you're, you're busted. Uh, Manessa. Uh, thank you for your hard work when you abolish CNN Student News in Livingston Parish. Uh, when will you abolish uh, CNN Student News uh, in high school civics classes in Common Core? Uh, uh, Vanessa, I, I, um, uh, certainly I think that the, that the parents, the teachers, the uh, school districts, and others, uh, just get somebody to print them, Kevin, please, uh, should be the ones who determine what type of curriculum the students are exposed to. If, they're, if the students are being exposed to things that are inappropriate or biased, inappropriately biased without getting the other side of the story as well, uh, I, I do think that's inappropriate. And so um, I'd urge you, the school board, uh, the principals, the Parent Teachers Association, and other venues uh, to reach out to your schools to make sure that your kids aren't being exposed to uh, things that you think are inappropriate for, for your children. Uh, Diane, good evening to you. Uh, Derek, thanks for being on. Uh, Diane, you're asking about the Social Security offset. Uh, many of you are, are affected by this. If you were a, a police officer, a teacher, if you worked uh, in public service, you might actually get a reduction in your Social Security benefits or your widow might. Uh, there are two um, unfortunate, uh, really just awful policies that were put in place in the early 1980s. One of them is called windfall elimination, and the other one is called government pension offset, WEP, and GPO. And um, uh, we have uh, tried, we filed an amendment to the tax bill trying to add those fixes to that tax bill. Unfortunately, they, they made some procedural moves that prevented us from offering the amendment. Uh, we are continuing to work on it. There's a bill that we're an advocate of by Congressman Rodney Davis of Illinois that fixes both of them permanently and, and continuing to work on, on those issues. Um, Let's see, uh, Ashley, uh, what do you do if you've applied for Restore and contacted them about it and hadn't heard anything? Um, Ashley, if you can give our office a call, we'd be happy to engage on your behalf. You can give us a call at 225-442-1731, uh, 225-442-1731. Um, all right, so I uh, just got a... A quick update on the wind farm for you. Uh, so there was a proposed wind farm in, uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, AEP uh, owns that farm, uh, the, the wind farm uh, area. Uh, the, the, I think the, the pros are that uh, it, it's providing clean energy or generates uh, uh, clean energy and, and creates jobs. Uh, obviously, um, there, there's some downsides to that as well, maybe taking jobs away from other energy sources. Uh, also, uh, there's some concerns about private property rights, apparently, with the project. And so there are concerns that, um, that some folks are adversely affected because they're losing property as a result of the wind farm. Uh, also, there are concerns about um, some of the uh, electromagnetic waves and the health effects associated with this project. So I guess the, that's kind of the pro and con. I, I don't know a whole lot of other about it. Somebody just scribbled a quick note giving us an, an update. And uh, because my computer is apparently frozen here, um, I've got questions printed out. So I'm going to go out of order now, and I apologize for that. But um, uh, let's see if I recognize names I spoke to. No, these must all be new. I already did it. already did it. Okay. Um, all right, so Adrian, you're saying November. Actually, Adrian, it's March. Um, 
Deacon Donald Lewis, uh, what about duplication of benefits? We're su uh, suffering and, and forced to get a loan. Uh, Deacon, I, I gave an update on this a little while ago. We passed it through the House to have a full fix for everybody to where you could be eligible for a grant. The Senate is uh, so far refusing to pass it. Uh, we are continuing to find other bills to attach it to in the House, and we're going to keep trying to send it over to the Senate and force them to act on it. Um, I've been in touch with Senator Kennedy and Senator Cassidy, and um, and I know that, that, that they would support this, but I'd, I'd urge you we need to keep pushing the Senate to act on this because the House is clearly uh, supportive of it. It was our bill, bipartisan bill, strong vote, in fact, the unanimous vote out of the committee uh, to, to move our bill. Um, Alyssa, thank you. Dutt, uh, thanks for meeting this week and, and pleasure working with you as well. Thanks, Dutt. Uh, Cheryl, uh, let's see. You said thank you. Uh, you asked about the health care earlier. Uh, please keep working on health care. I had a $1,000 deductible, deductible before Obamacare, <laughs> and now it's a $10,000 deductible. And that's right. So. <coughs> <coughs> So many people, not only did your premiums increase, but also your, uh, your deductible increased as well. So you'd think if your premium increased, you'd be getting more, uh, meaning a lower deductible, but the opposite has happened. Both your premium's gone up and your deductible's gone up. Um, so, so Cheryl, absolutely frustrated. Um, GA, let us see more undercover agents in schools. And GA, I assume you're talking about in an effort to prevent gun violence in schools. And certainly uh, additional security in schools is something that's important. Um, but, but as we saw at, at the Parkland High School, the security there did not work. So we've got to make sure that people are properly trained. We need to make sure that they're properly equipped. And also something that's really important, you can look back at a lot of these different shooting incidents that have happened, Sutherland Spring shooting in Texas, the uh, uh, San Bernardino shooting, the Pulse nightclub shooting, uh, Sandy Hook shooting, the shooting at Parkland High School. These all have a theme. And one of the themes, in fact, even the Steve Scalise shooting, they all had a theme in that law enforcement was called out to, uh, but because of different dis disturbances or concerns associated with many of these murderers. And so th there's, a, there's a law enforcement piece of this that is a preventative measure that we need to also be talking about. And look, there are a whole bunch of other things, but one other thing I want to make note of from a lot of the meetings that we've had in the last few weeks with Parkland High School students um, and, and other folks concerned about gun violence is the fact that, look, um, when I was in school, and, and I know when many of you were in school, uh, preschool, grade school, high school, a, a, any of them, we did not have fences, we didn't have gates, we didn't have security guards, and we didn't have insecurity or concern. Schools were safe places. Something has changed in our communities, and we cannot forget that important point. We've got to make sure that any solution that we move forward on addresses that issue. I also want to make uh, sure that y'all are aware that we actually did pass a bill, and this was well before the Parkland High School shooting, that did improve the NIC system, the national, um, the, 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 the background check system that is used uh, whenever someone buys a gun. So we passed it through the House, and the, and the Senate um, has not moved that one yet. Uh, Mary Ann, who's responsible for lottery sales distribution? It was supposed to go to roads and schools. Show us where the money's going. Okay, so a few things. So um, the distribution, obviously there's a lottery, Louisiana Lottery Corporation that runs the lottery itself, but the funds go to the state legislature, and they're the ones who determine how those monies are going to be spent. It's the governor and, and the state legislature are the ones that um, are the ones that do that. Um, if you have any trouble at all, Marianne, uh, getting information from your legislators or from uh, uh, the governor's office on, on where that money has gone historically, meaning looking back how much has gone to education, roads, or other things, uh, please let us know, and I'd be happy to reach out to state officials and see if we can get that information for you. Um, all right, let's see, new sheet. Uh, James, please, please, what's going on with Restore? Um, I spoke. 10 earlier and no help. Um, actually, your, your question's cut off here on my paper. So I'm, um, uh, let me see here. So Restore, there was an article in The Advocate on 
I think it was Saturday. It was a big pie chart and, and kind of laid out what was going on. Look, I, I'll reiterate, I'm frustrated. Uh, we've been frustrated. We actually predicted this was going to happen long ago in, in about uh, uh, September of 2016. We said this was going to happen because um, the, the, the state did not put the proper, uh, kind of lay the proper groundwork for this. They, they issued a contract too late. They gave the contractor no information, no database of flooded victims. They, they started collecting information from people in April and I think even first week of May maybe and it was way too late and so um, according to the uh, uh, the advocate article uh, gosh it was uh, I want to say that uh, they, they've only cut checks for like 64 million or something again look at the advocate article I don't remember the numbers right off they had approved much more than that but they'd only cut checks for like 64 million and that's out of 1.7 billion dollars that we got them but James look if you're still having problems please do call our office let us see if we can engage also it's helpful for us to see kind of the trend of problems that people are having because we may be able to uh, push restore to make changes or, or recommend changes to them on how they could be more efficient uh, so James please um, give our office a call two two five four four two one seven three one is our office in Baton Rouge uh, Amanda SBA has seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in liens on my home and only has loaned just 250 I appreciate your office's help in getting this resolved for us I mean I'm sorry I, I, I know we met at, um, at the breakfast uh, coffee that morning uh, I'm sorry you're still having problems and uh, we will continue working that that obviously disparity having triple the liens is uh, is excessive uh, Robert um, him speaking with forked tongue. Um, Indian reenactment, I don't know what's going on. Scott, hope you're doing well. Uh, how can we solve Louisiana's budget gap? Special session call ended with no resolve. By the way, it cost us over a million dollars. That's not good use of taxpayers. No, look, I agree with you. And, and I think there's plenty of blame to go around. Um, but uh, a few things, you know, what, what can we do? Well, I'll tell you. The tax bill that we did up here uh, actually provides that there were initial estimates there's going to be uh, $200 million in, 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 in relief for the state's budget problems. Uh, later estimates are saying it's actually $305 million, and some people are predicting it could even be higher than that. Something else we've done, Scott, is we've provided over eight billion dollars to the state of Louisiana for, for recovery uh, from the floods. And let me be clear, that includes flood insurance payments, that includes DSNAP, that includes um, individual and public assistance, uh, uh, community development block grants, lots of money. But, but here's the important point, Scott. All of that is federal money. There has not been a penny of state money that has been put into flood recovery. Over $8 billion in federal funds we've been able to bring to the table. Uh, we've been providing relief through other FEMA programs to the state of Louisiana where FEMA was trying to claw back money from the state of Louisiana, from previous disasters. I'm certainly not getting to the Livingston Parish issue that you're so familiar with, but these are other ones. Uh, so, so uh, Scott, my, my two cents is, is that I think that you do need to take a fresh look at the Constitution in the state of Louisiana. I think that there are too many dollars that are locked up into special programs that the legislature cannot access uh, as one thing. Uh, having worked in state government for, uh, for some period of time, I think you have disparity in different state agencies in terms of the efficiency of those agencies. And I think that we need to take an overall look at government, not just sit there and cut education and healthcare every time there are budget problems. Not that I'm saying that, that all the efficiency has been squeezed out of anywhere, but, um, uh, but I do think that you, you need to uh, unlock some of those dollars and take a fresh look at, at all the revenue streams that, uh, that, that, that comes into state government. Uh, Jonathan. Notice there was a state second special session of legislature, then a sudden announced state government airplane. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I know that there is talk of a second special session. They're talking about ending the regular session early, calling a special session at, effectively during the period they would be ending the, the regular session, um, and, and they would potentially address the budget issue there, uh, but they would have all the hearings and try and lay the groundwork during the special session on the airplane. I don't know if you're kidding or not, but I hadn't seen that, but that certainly seems like it would be ill-timing, doesn't it? Um, Marianne, uh, why can't we legalize pot to fix pot? <laughs> potholes and get us out of debt. You know, Marianne, um, if we legalize pot, people may not care about potholes, right? Um, no, kidding. So, um, look, you know, the, the, the deal is, is that certainly states, you know, Colorado, Washington, and others that have legalized marijuana have uh, uh, significantly profited from that um, uh, 
I don't even know what to call it, that new line of business. Um, my, my thing is on, on focusing on health. I think that we've got to let doctors uh, and, and health studies guide us on that. There are studies that say that it, it causes health problems. There are studies that indicate it's a gateway drug and, and, um, and potentially lowers productivity. Uh, some of them have seen brain damage, heart damage, and look, I'm not a physician. I'm not trying to uh, be an expert, but I have read some of these studies indicating problems, and, and I think this needs to be guided by science. Uh, one thing I know that uh, I've met with a number of people with different ailments and diseases that have indicated that that is the only thing that provides relief to them. There is a way to extract the chemical, what is it, THC, that is in uh, that plant that, that provides relief, and I think that's one way of addressing it. But, um, but certainly um, uh, we need to make sure that we make the right decision based on, on, on uh, health effects and other things. Uh, Monique, why does Louisiana ask for more recovery funds for rebuilding when only 1.5 of 1.3 billion has been spent to date? 1.5 million, excuse me, of 1.3 billion has been spent to date. And Monique, I've said those exact words when the state has asked us and said, oh, we need more recovery money. You can imagine uh, the, how well the conversations would go when I go to the um, when I go to the Appropriations Committee and say, hey, we need more money, and they say, well, you still have 99% of the money in the bank that we gave you last time. And, and so that conversation usually doesn't go very well. I've shared those uh, or relayed those conversations to the state of Louisiana and, and asked them to uh, try and speed things up, and we're continuing to work with them <coughs> on that. Um, Let's see, who did we do? Uh, we did Monique, George, thanks for being on. Joel, uh, thanks for the answer. Cer answer certainly agree that self-determination and the right to determine uh, one's own future is critical. Thanks for all you do. Thanks, Joel. Uh, Joe, good evening, Mr. Gray's. Any updates on HR 711, um, which if I remember right, that HR 711 was the bill number from the last Congress, and I think that was the, the bill that Congressman Brady had introduced uh, that had to do with the Social Security adjustments we were talking about earlier. Um, we actually uh, tried, yeah, what you're actually saying, that's the Social Security windfall uh, tax penalty on public servants. Uh, Joe, I gave an update on that earlier. Um, we did try and attach it as our amendment. Our, we, we filed the amendment and tried to attach it to the tax bill uh, back in December. Uh, there were some procedural moves that, that blocked us from offering the amendment. Unfortunately, obviously, I fought those, but uh, we, we couldn't get the amendment offered. And so um, uh, we're, we're continuing to work. There's a, there's a bill I mentioned earlier by Congressman Rodney Davis that, that would repeal both windfall elimination and government pension offset, and we're pushing that one this year. Um, and, and actually, we're trying to push it last year as well. So, Joe, we'll continue doing that, but I, I want to urge you, and I mentioned this on, on uh, two Facebook Lives back, that to the extent you know people in other states that are impacted by this same thing, please reach out to them. Louisiana delegation in general is in pretty good space on this, but we need help from other states, uh, really do, and, and, and anything you could do to help us expand the network would be, would be great. Uh, Jonathan, you need to stand up against assault weapons ban of 2018. Um, Jonathan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and, and, and say that um, I want to make sure that actions we carry out in regard to gun violence actually have an effect. And when I say an effect, meaning that, that we have science or we have uh, studies showing that it would provide a benefit. Look, I've read a numerous studies from the, um, from the 94 assault weapons ban that was in place. And, um, and, and uh, based on, uh, based on, on that ban, uh, there were, uh, Basically, the, the, I think the guy's name was Copper or Coper, who kind of did the, the big analysis. He came back and he said, look, he said, it's inconclusive. He said it, it might have um, or it likely didn't result, in, and please read the study yourself, but it effectively said it, it likely did not result in, in, in reduction in, in, in deaths. Um, also, as I recall, under that bill that you made mention of, um, in some cases, they were banning a gun that simply had a different, um, uh, a different handle or stock on it. There was no difference in the actual functionality of the gun, but it just had a different uh, stock on it and, and things that, that simply didn't make sense. Um, also, I remind you, look, I, I own a number of guns and, and enjoy shooting. Um, I've got uh, pistols that hold more rounds than, and, and not a pistol with a big, you know, circular uh, clip or anything like that. Just I have regular pistols uh, that, that, that hold more rounds than many assault rifles. And so I think there are a lot of people that are acting on emotion. Clearly, there's a problem. 
and we do need to address it. I talked about some solutions earlier that I think are part of the overall package. We cannot forget, though, that something has changed in our community where this type of violence is more prevalent now than it was when we were growing up. We've got to make sure we address that root cause as well. I think there's some mental health issues. I think that making sure that we integrate the different databases to where if the FBI is called, if law enforcement's called, and, and ex concerns are expressed about some of these people, we've got to make sure that that is followed up. In many of these shootings, we found that people called the police or law enforcement and said, look, this guy's crazy, this guy's going to kill people, whatever else, he's got guns. Law enforcement never followed up, and we've got to make sure that federal law enforcement <coughs> fully addresses that. We did pass a bill, <coughs> sorry guys, through the House of Representatives that addresses uh, some fixes or improvements to the NICS background check system. All right, let's see. Um, uh, Monique, George, Joel, uh, Joe, Jonathan. Okay, here we go. Reed, uh, Reed, thanks for sharing. George, what's the matter with you? It's March. Uh, Chris, um, uh, you, you stand against assault weapons ban. Thanks. Uh, Donald, uh, Deacon Donald Lewis. Uh, oh, wait, du duplication benefits. I think we called that one. Alyssa, hello to you. And Dutt, um, I think we did that one already as well. Um, Kimbrell, you need a meeting. Uh, as soon as possible. Um, Kimbrell, I'm in D.C. right now. Um, <coughs> if you'd like to, if you'd like to uh, get on the phone, uh, give us a call in D.C. office. It's 202-225-3901. Um, and if you want to meet at home, uh, give us a call. Actually, just call the same number and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll try and work something out. But 202-225-3901 uh, and, and we'll We'll try and work out a call or a meeting. Uh, Mary Ann, um, having a hard time finding a contractor due to restore not paying final payments. Uh, Mary Ann, that, that's a problem. Uh, that, that reliability of payments is, uh, is very important. I know a lot of people, uh, and I know I certainly wouldn't have the finances to float that kind of payment either. Um, so if you can call our office, if we can help uh, with restore and, and urge them to make that payment, we're, we're certainly happy to do that. Uh, Joseph. As you know, the maritime industry is incredibly important in our state. What are your views on funding uh, national security multi-mission vessels for the state maritime academies? Um, uh, let's see. So, Joseph, I want to make sure I understood your question. Uh, Joseph, the deal is, is that uh, under current law, um, when you sell a, um, a, a, a old uh, federal vessel, a, a military vessel or, or some other type of vessel that the government owns, a portion of those monies is supposed to go to fund um, our, our maritime uh, academies. And so uh, that is something that we have uh, worked on. We've urged uh, MARAD and, and, and the budget office to make sure that those monies go to the right place. Uh, we think in some cases the way that they've sold the scrap uh, for these vessels has not maximized uh, full public value. What I mean by that is, is if you have a vessel, you need to make sure that, that you are um, finding the highest price you can get for that vessel because they then cut it up into scraps and then sell the steel, recycle the steel. And, um, and, and so we need to make sure that the taxpayers profit off of that as much as possible. Um, so, so those are some things that we have been working on and have been involved in this with Marad Coast Guard at different hearings in the past, and we've met with them in our office a number of times as well. Uh, but I agree with you. Mar maritime industry is very important in the state of Louisiana. We handle about 19% uh, of all the nation's maritime commerce that come through our waterways. And um, last study I saw from the Ports Association of Louisiana, We've got to make sure uh, that, that we don't just sit back and say, well, let's just, let's just wait for emotions to pass on this Parkland High School and, and we don't do anything. I think there's some real fixes we can do that respect the Second Amendment, but importantly, will have real positive implications on, on helping to prevent gun violence. Hey, boss, pause for a second. I think we're having some technical issues. Tell me if he is skipping. All right. Um, my phone is at 18%. Look, there's a, there's a, tr oh. But I can't put You can't put it in the mic. Well, all right. So we're running out of juice, but uh, we're going to keep going here. I've got some, got some more questions. Um, 
Let's see, where was I? I see, so Ralph, okay, Kiki, um, I have a question. I'm disabled. I lost everything in the flood. Oh, my goodness, you got a long, let's see. Um, Okay, so I think you're, you're asking about um, help for people with disabilities and, and, and effectively saying that people who are affected by the flood and have disabilities, you have special needs. And I certainly agree with that. Um, and that is why, uh, number one, in a bill that we passed through the Transportation Committee and through the full House of Representatives in December, we actually did provide some additional assistance uh, for folks with disabilities. Number two, uh, there, there are some programs that exist under current law. And if you're having, Kiki, I want to say you actually reached out to our office already. Um, but, but, um, uh, but but please do, or maybe I asked you to call our office, but please give us a call. And let us just, I don't want you to put all your personal information about what medical problems you may be having on the, on the, on the public website, but give us a call. Let's see what we can do to, to figure out exactly what's going on with you, what we can do to help. There are some programs that are out there. There's some special funds that we provided uh, to federal and state agencies that may be able to help you. Uh, office number in Baton Rouge, probably the best place to call, is 225-442. One seven three one. Uh, Deacon, thank you. Wendy. Uh, oh, that was the the wind project. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Um, Donna, restoring these cap recalculate grants for those of us who did not take SBA. Um, uh, Donna, the, the the law that Trump did sign uh, a few weeks ago. I'm not certain that that really fixed it the way that some people think that it did. Um, we met with HUD and talked to him about all this, but bottom line is, if you did not take the SBA loan um, and were approved for it, the, the state should have the flexibility or discretion to still give you a grant. And, and there are a few little caveats there, but generally speaking, you should be eligible. So uh, Donna, if that's not the case, um, uh, please check back in with Restore. Please give us a call, and I'll see if we can uh, uh, help out there. Um, but we, I want to reiterate, we are continuing to work on that larger fix for everybody. Uh, Chris Coon, you were also against assault weapons ban, and thank you. Uh, Dick and Donna Lewis, uh, let's see, we already talked about duplication of benefits. Alyssa, I think, yeah, I think we already went through these, right? Um, uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah. There's. Okay, Cindy, if you didn't accept the SBA loan in the flood of August 16, are you now eligible to receive uh, the Restore Louisiana? So, Cindy, effectively, yes. You, you under the law, you, you are. Whether Restore program um, accepts that or not is kind of a different deal. Uh, but under the law, Yes, you, you, you should be eligible. If you run into problems, uh, please, please give us a call and, um, and happy, to, happy to help out. Um, so, Robert, you're saying that you called our office and I never called you back. Um, I'll tell you, I actually have a, I actually have a, a, a call list that, that every person who calls goes on the call list and uh, I call them, or if somebody else can properly handle it, then, uh, then they can call them. But, um, but, but um, let's see. So, I just want to, what, what's RGs? Robert Gaines. You said three more? What is that? Okay, okay. All right, so Robert, here's what we have. Um, apparently, there are three different, believe it or not, Robert Gaines that have called our office. Um, there is a Robert Gaines, that I'm not sure if this is you or not, that did call our office. Uh, we did start a FEMA case, and that case was closed already in January of 2017. There were, oh, actually, there were a total of four. There were three more uh, Robert Gaines that did call our office, and they called to discuss issues or share opinions on different issues. And so um, we, we don't have a Robert Gaines that called that asked for me to call him back. Uh, Robert, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, just give us a call and let us know. Explain real quick um, the privacy release form, just conceptually, is how like, that's a trigger point. And yep. Uh, and, and Robert, if, if you did have a case uh, with our office, meaning if you're having problems with FEMA or Restore or SBA or anyone else, 
you, before we can engage on your behalf, you have to send us a privacy relief form, a release form, excuse me. So you call our office, we, we refer you to the privacy release form and show you where that is. You sign that, send it to us, then we can engage the agency on your behalf. Uh, so there might have been something lost in, in translation there, but I just want to be clear that we do um, uh, keep uh, a, a system in place that makes sure that we don't have people fall through the cracks. I'll tell you that, you know, it's not 100% foolproof. We, we have had a few people have fallen through the cracks, and I'll take responsibility and apologize for that. But um, the far majority of people, and, and like I said, 99% plus, we, we do handle, we call back and everything else. I don't have a Robert Gaines on my call list, but I'd be happy to give you a call. Um, let's see, James, please head on the Restore program. Some Actually... No, I hadn't. Uh, James, I, I think I answered another question. You said you're, I'm ready to toss my cards uh, in and list the property they own to move Mississippi. Uh, James, please don't, um, uh, please don't do that. Look, I, I know the Restore program has been frustrating. A lot of people we've been talking to have been expressing uh, uh, much frustration about that. And um, please stick with it. There is an awful lot of money that that program has to hand out. It's all federal money. Uh, the state has, has not implemented the program the way that we would have preferred. But in any case, uh, stick with it. There is money there. And, and, you know, if you're eligible for a grant, certainly get that money and let's get you back in your home and business. Uh, Scott, uh, we don't want any type of gun control. Um, let's see. Charlie, as a manufactured home dealer, the Restore program is not working. People must finance a portion of their new home purchase, which is okay, but the Restore has no draw schedule for construction 100% after Restore's final inspection, um, and that puts you all at risk. And, and Charlie, I agree with you. Um, I actually had a meeting with uh, Brock Long, who's the administrator of FEMA last week, where we talked about this a good bit. Um, uh, one, on the whole uh, manufactured housing program or the um, uh, the, the trailer program where they uh, FEMA provided trailers to folks. We, we talked to them about it and just, just giving this to local governments or giving people checks and letting them go to the local uh, trailer mobile home dealers and buying their own as opposed to spending uh, five, six, seven, eight times as much uh, going through this federal program doesn't make sense. And, and I agree. Um, and let's, let's flag this, uh, make sure that we reach out to restore on the payment schedule, the draw schedule that Charlie's bringing up. Uh, someone else brought up the same issue on paying a contractor. So paying to buy a mobile home or paying a contractor. Let's make sure we hit them on both. Uh, Ashley, uh, thank you and I'll contact your office tomorrow. Great. Thanks, Ashley. Um, Charlie, uh, school violence, um, broken homes it can, equals broken kids. And Charlie, I, I mentioned this last time. Look, I, I've been trying to learn uh, about different ideas and solutions well before this Parkland High School shooting. I've met with uh, school counselors and other counselors, psychiatrists, uh, and many others just getting feedback from them. <laughs> and um, um, one of the themes that I heard from many of these folks is the fact that <clears throat> um, the, the fact that, that uh, one of the best things you can do for, for, to prevent this is to have people grow up in, a, in, a, in an unconditionally loving environment, just to having a secure environment for kids to grow up in. And, um, and, and so, you know, certainly uh, homes where, where kids aren't exposed to that could lead to more problems. And that was something uh, totally unprovoked. Many of the uh, teachers and uh, uh, counselors and others that I spoke with brought up. Um, Donovan, thank you for taking the time yesterday to meet with our uh, LAC group and your office to discuss uh, funding of school nutrition meals. Yeah, you bet. I appreciate y'all coming over and you're saying uh, you want to personally thank me for your efforts to support healthy meals for our students. You bet. Um, and look, uh, I appreciate what y'all do. I know that's a tough job. Um, I, I usually get tasked with cooking for our family and uh, I think it's tough cooking for five sometimes, so I imagine... Uh, I imagine what y'all are doing is uh, is very tough, but certainly do appreciate it. And look, this was an example of <coughs> some folks that are on the ground and having to deal with different federal regulations, and they're giving us feedback and saying, look, these regulations just don't work. They don't make sense. There was a suspension of some of the regulations, and they were just giving us guidance on, on what we should be advocating for to make the most sense and apply the most common sense at home. So again, Donovan, appreciate y'all coming up. Uh, Scott, 
Uh, thank you for meeting with the University of High School 7th graders. Uh, you bet. And uh, Scott, I'm glad you all came up. It was great to see uh, Carter and everybody uh, there. We, we took a group of schools, uh, school students um, to the uh, house floor late at night. Uh, I think they all uh, finally left around 11 p.m. and, and just uh, teaching folks about the house and answering some real tough questions from some of the kids. It was, it was great. Uh, Paula. Uh, what do you think about the mayors and cities that telegraph and immigration customs enforcement raid uh, should have to reimburse, uh, reimburse the man hours uh, pre, during, and post? Rapists and murders were part of the last 800 that got away. President Donald Trump should put ICE in our border control in charge of the census. Paula, I think that any uh, mayor or anybody who relays uh, what is happening in otherwise undisclosed or covert law enforcement activities, I think that is entirely inappropriate. I think those people should be held accountable uh, for that. There are various proposals, as you know, Attorney General Jeff Sessions is uh, in California talking about um, tying some of this to, to different funding sources and other things, but I'll say it again. I think it puts law enforcement in jeopardy. I mean, think about this. Think about if, if, if some mayor were to go and, and relay and say, hey, drug dealer, uh, they're, they're going to make a raid on your house on Wednesday. I mean, those drug dealers could be prepared for the raid. They could put the law enforcement in jeopardy. That was irresponsible. I think it was reckless. And I do think that um, people that make those types of statements uh, should be held accountable for, for those reckless actions. actions. Um, Sonia, uh, do you support uh, Louisiana HB for teachers, uh, and do you oppose the anti-gun bill the Democrats introduced? Uh, um, um, yeah, uh, Sonia, I'm not sure <coughs> which House bill you're talking about. Uh, if you're talking about the one that would potentially arm teachers, um, you know, I'll tell you, I kind of have mixed thoughts on that. Um, first of all, looking back at my own experiences, um, if, uh, if my teachers, if all of my teachers were armed growing up, uh, there's a good chance that I wouldn't be standing here today. Um, uh, I think that there's certain people, just like a concealed weapons permit, there's certain people that, that want to have a weapon and I think can go through the training to, to carry one that may be appropriate, but you also have to keep in mind that additional guns in school, if, if given to the wrong people, are not properly uh, um, uh, concealed or carried or used could actually uh, put more folks in jeopardy. So I, I don't support a blanket arming of teachers. I, I think that's dangerous. There are other security measures in schools in terms of trains, law enforcement officers, and other people that are truly trained and comfortable carrying weapons that could be teachers. Uh, but, but, but blanket arming of teachers, it, it draws some concern on, on my part. Um, let's see, Margaret, I think I addressed the, the, the duplication of benefits, Rebecca. Uh, more than enough funds for federal government to fix those who flooded and lost homes. Uh, money was not used properly. Rebecca, um, I agree. Uh, Daphne, uh, keep up good work. Too bad Exxon didn't hear back from Governor Evans in 2016, 2017. A new plant was moved from the proposed area of Donaldsonville to Corpus Christi, Texas. Scared no one other business is moving out of state. And, and, and look, I, I, look, I agree. Um, one of the things we have to do, and I was talking to some people about this today, uh, the state of Louisiana needs to look at its tax code and ensure that we have a competitive tax code. You look at states like Florida and Texas that have a, 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 a significantly different approach uh, to, to state taxes. And I think that they are, are demonstrating an ability to lure or incentivize businesses to those states more so than Louisiana. We've got to make sure that Louisiana is competitive, that we're giving Louisianians good employment opportunities, opportunities to, to move up and opportunities to, 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 to have uh, uh, growing salaries and things along those lines. Joe, uh, I chose not to rebuild my house after the flood. I sold to the loss. So I could not buy another in the area that didn't flood. I was initially, I initially understood the restore was going to help, uh, but it had been turned down. Uh, Joe, if, if you experienced a loss um, and, and you did not otherwise get compensated for those losses, I just want to say that you, you should be eligible. I don't know all the specifics of your case. If you can give our office a call, we'd be happy to look into it for you, see if we can offer some guidance. 225-442-1731 is the number. Also in that note, uh, the IRS just this week published guidance uh, related to a bill that we introduced last year that uh, those of you that flooded 
even your first dollar of losses uh, from the flood, if you, you know, lost money, if you lost computer, you lost a car, whatever, um, you should be eligible for a lower tax bill. And I know that you've already filed your 20, most likely filed your 2016 taxes. You can file an amended return and you can actually get money back. Um, also, if you tapped your retirement account to pay for your flood losses, you might have been hit with a 10% penalty, 25% penalty, and taxed as income on your income taxes. Those also, in most cases, will be eliminated. So you can go back and file an updated 2016 return and get that money back. So please let people know that. The, the, the guidance on how to do it was just issued today. Consult with your tax uh, advisor on, on exactly how to do that. Um, we have time or no? Okay, I'm being told we need a wrap. We're running out of juice. Um, so I know there, there are a handful of people here. Uh, I'll certainly go through and read all these and uh, figure out what's going on with the computer. But I want to thank all of you all for being on. I urge you one more time, if you could share this, it would be very helpful in helping us do a better job representing the 750,000 people in South Louisiana we represent. Um, uh, urge you all to continue engaging and, and uh, dialoguing in your government. That's the way this is supposed to work. We represent you all. You all help us identify priorities and issues and giving us good ideas. Some of the bills we've introduced have come from this venue, have come from meetings we've had and uh, experience that we've had just, just traveling around South Louisiana and meeting with many of you. So help us represent you. Help us do a better job representing you. And I, I hope you enjoyed this venue for accountability where you can hold us accountable for actions and share ideas and, um, and, and different concepts with us. Y'all have a great night. Thanks for being on and God bless.